Maybe all we need is that shuttle to fall. That thing? How? We'll figure it out. Just wait here. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video where today we're taking a look at Horizon 2 Forbidden West. It just released on Steam and it's the latest Sony PlayStation exclusive game to come to PC ported by Nixus. For this video we're going to check out the RTX 4090 Ryzen 7800 X3D with 32 gigs of DDR5 6000 megahertz C30 RAM. And we're going to be targeting 3440 by 1440 ultra wide and I'll be using my Alienware QD OLED 175Hz display. We're going to check out native resolution first. We'll take a look at frame generation as well. And we're using DLAA as a form of anti-aliasing. For graphical settings, I've maxed everything out. And I've turned off lens flares, vignette, radial blur, and chromatic aberration. Also, motion blur. So, let's jump into the game. And it actually loads pretty quickly. So we'll hit continue here. One, two, three, four, five, six. About five to six seconds it takes to load. So it's pretty good. And we're towards the end of the tutorial part of the game here. And we'll take a look at the performance metrics and take a look at the core utilization. And um, it, it's okay. It's it's pretty good i mean we do have some cores that run higher than others they're utilized more than others but that is very common in games no game is going to use every single core evenly but we are able to remain uh, gpu bound for the most part uh, 300 watts a 4090 run in gpu bound should be a little bit higher than that but gpu use is around 98 percent i'd say that's pretty good our frame times look really good one percent lows are in the mid 80s so game feels extremely smooth and fluid no problem at all we have vram use is not bad we have around close to nine gigabytes of uh, allocation and close to eight gigabytes in utilization so that's not that's not bad at all Anyway, we'll continue on here and then we'll check out frame generation in a bit because um, I did take a quick look at it. It actually works extremely well. Now, interestingly enough, I actually have played this game on my PlayStation 5. I didn't really play it much because I kind of knew it was coming to PC and the game came bundled with my PlayStation 5. But it actually does look really good on the PlayStation 5 as well. So I've been through this before. Let's kill these things. And I love playing this game with a mouse and keyboard. I did enjoy Horizon Zero Dawn, actually. Played it with a mouse and keyboard. I do like it. Let's see if we can get this one here. I'm going to try to sneak behind it. I don't know if it's going to work. Maybe. Got it. Let's continue on to our destination. And as you can see, the performance is still pretty good. We have nice and fluid uh, frame times, which is very important. There. That ladder can get me up to the tower. Knock this down. Get the ladder down. The game feels pretty good in uh, mouse and keyboard. Very, very smooth. Just kind of a pain getting used to the all the controls and stuff. Um, they have control is apparently dodge. But if you double press any of the directional buttons, like WASD, you actually roll into the ground. I was trying to sneak into the tall grass and I accidentally double tapped the directional button and I popped out of there. So <laughs> I'm not sure how much I like that. Ooh -wee. There we go. Got it. All right, let's get up to the launch platform. So I, I might actually have to change that. And you do have native dual sense support, which is pretty cool. But I just can't do controllers whenever you have to aim. So in this game, there's a lot of aiming. I prefer mouse much more, just a lot more accurate with it. Although uh, with Horizon Zero Dawn on PlayStation 5 anyway, you can actually use uh, gyro controls, which actually works really well because and you can actually customize it to some degree as well. You know, you can aim with the joystick, but then you can use the gyro to fine tune your aim, which actually works really well. Let's continue. And then once we get to the top over there, we'll, um, we'll check out frame generation. Why don't we check out frame generation? Because we are at around 100 FPS, 110 FPS. 
monitor we're using is 175 hertz so why don't we try some frame generation so you go to display here and you have DLSS frame generation uh, I'm not sure if the game has FSR 3 I haven't I will be checking it out on my Radeon cards as well but for now we're gonna turn frame generation on and let's see what we get okay so we went from 110 to 165 FPS so that's great I'm actually reaching close to my monitors refresh rate it feels about the same but the image fluidity is perfect it looks so good I don't see any tearing or any sort of uh, artifacting or garbling of textures or anything like that actually it's extremely extremely smooth and our GPU use is still around 98% and we're at around 300 watts or high 200s actually extremely efficient guys if you think about it right we're using RTX 4090 below 300 watts and the 7800 X3D is pulling below 60 watts that's an extremely efficient system I think the PlayStation 5 uh, what does that draw uh, when it's running uh, uh, maximum? I think it's a close to 300, isn't it? I forget. Frame time looks great. Well, let's see the cinematics. Sometimes you get a uh, weird behavior uh, with cinematics sometimes. But no, we're still doing pretty good. It looks like every time the scene changes, you get a little bit of a hitch on the frame times. But that's fine. You're not controlling anything, so it doesn't. If you didn't have the, the performance metrics there, you wouldn't even know. The shuttle's caught up in those cables. I'm going to have to climb the tower to find a way to disconnect them. Aloy here loves to tell you she narrates everything she does. It's kind of like my, uh, my grandma. <laughs> oh, man, it can be annoying sometimes. I do have to change uh, the controls because double pressing a button, <laughs> look, it just, it's so sensitive. My keyboard can be really sensitive sometimes and I find myself leaping forward and that's not good in this game. You could just go flying off a mountain without knowing. There we go. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh my God. All right. How do we turn this off? I'd rather just press control to roll. There we go. Double tap to dodge. We're going to disable that. Because I almost died because of that. All right. Let's go ahead and try some DLSS here. Go ahead and disable frame generation. Yes. And we're back down to 120 something FPS. Let's try DLSS quality. We're going to change anti-aliasing to... I'll just go to upscale method and DLSS quality here. Apply. And we went from 120 to 145 or something like that. And how does the game look? It just still looks pretty good. I can't, can't really tell that anything's off. Although I would probably just play this game natively just because um, it's works seems to work just fine ideally i'd be happy with 90 fps playing a game like this no problem all right let's shoot this next one and then i believe we fight one of those uh serpents so that should be interesting There we go. I think now we fight the serpent, guys. Let's get ready. DLSS quality serpent. Here we come. Uh, let's scan it first. Shock orb, weak spot. What's that? Ooh. Got 
one down. Get over here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, it's completely free now. Oh, and it's about to give us a vaccine. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Take that. We didn't die. And uh, yeah, with DLSS quality, we're beyond 120 FPS here. Why don't we try dropping down to balance. Just want to see if we end up hitting any CPU limitations. No, we seem to be, we seem to still be at 98%. So that, that's pretty good. Let's go to the data center. And yeah, guys, DLSS balance. Yeah, 145 FPS. That's pretty good. I think the game still looks pretty good. I don't see any of uh, the usual flaws that I notice with DLSS that bother me the most is ghosting. Uh, I still find ghosting in some games with particles and stuff like that. And there's none of that here, uh, usually with distant objects too. But this one, it's a perfect implementation of DLSS and frame generation. It's sort of like um, Avatar is for FSR 3. I would say this game is kind of for DLSS. We'll probably end up checking FSR as well uh, on another video. I just don't want this one to be crazy long. But anyway, guys, this was supposed to be just a sort of a preview look at the game. Just to see how it runs and I'm very happy I think it runs great I can't wait to test it on some of my other hardware but I'm gonna be very busy because Dragon's Dogma is coming as well and that one seems like it'll be more interesting to take a look at because it seems like it'll be very CPU limited that game and I find <laughs> funny enough I find games that have problems to be a little more interesting to take a look at sort of uh, see why or why something's happening, where the issue lies. I do find stuff like that interesting. I think Horizon Forbidden West is very well optimized game from what I can tell. I mean, if every PC game was like this, I would be very happy. But unfortunately, that's not the case. But we are going to take a look at Dragon's Dogma too. I'll probably have a video for that tomorrow, my, my time zone, um, which is Eastern US. And, um, yeah, word is that Capcom is aware of the CPU limitation issues the game's having. And I'm hoping that they can uh, launch a fix because I have seen some of the videos and especially the main city area is extremely, extremely CPU limited. And that is not good. I don't know why. So anyway, that'll be it, guys. Uh, I Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed this. It was just supposed to be a quick look at the game, goddess. and I will see you in the next one. There is no goddess. I told you that already. That's not Gaia. That's not what I'm looking for. It's nothing but a fake.